it's Rudy here and today's video I'm going to look at uh, basing cavalry. Um, I've been painting up some um, Chasseur à Cheval for uh, my Napoleonic um, French army, part of uh, the Italian contingent. Um, I've got eight models representing um, uh, the regiment for games like Black Powder and Valor and Fortitude. Um, and I'm going to be multi-basing in that I'm going to be putting two models uh, to a base. So officer here um, and trumpeter to go alongside. Um, I'm using 50 millimeter um, MDF. Um, these ones have a rounded edge. They came from war bases. They're quite nice. Um, I'll always do a dry fit before um, I base, I glue anything down because you sometimes have issues with things like scabbards hanging over the side of the base that could impede the next base along. Um, if you're doing a particularly big unit, then you might have a second rank of horse um, and the tails and the noses might interfere with each other. Um, so I'll set things up and have a look at what to do next. Okay, so here's a top-down view of my dry run of the uh, cavalry models before I glue them down. The other thing to bear in mind is where your um, different companies are going to be. Um, I've got the elite company here um, with their nice big red plumes on top of their call packs. Um, and they are going to be um, to the right of the line. And I've got the uh, line chasseurs over to the left here. Um, this is where pom-poms um, can be helpful to keep you right and um, blue for line companies here. Now the officer's a bit different, he's a bit special with his white and purple one. But anyway, um, I want him near the middle of the unit so that in games like Black Powder, that's where you measure from. Also looks good as the, the focal point in the, the centre. Um, Looking down at the models, I see I've got enough clearance between them. Um, nobody's getting jostled. There's a bit of an overhang, perhaps, of a scabbard here. So I'll move this one over a bit. This might help with packing the model away if it's not overhanging and making the, the footprint um, bigger if you've got a foam case. Um, it's not going to be too much of an issue with the small regiment, but the other thing you'd probably want to do now if you were going two or more ranks deep just to make sure that your tails um, and noses aren't interfering. You can offset the horses a little to the side um, or perhaps go for, for deeper bases. Um, these are plastic models going on to MDF so I'll use super glue um, to glue them down. If it was metal models I'd use super glue as well. Um, if I was using plastic bases and plastic models I'd probably use polystyrene cement. As I'm gluing down I'm going to work from one side to the other so that I'm maintaining the spacing when the model goes down. And I'll do that all the way along, making sure I'm not interfering with the next base. All right, so what am I actually going to do the basing with? Um, I've got some Vallejo uh, dark earth, um, earth mm -hmm. texture. Um, it's like an acrylic um, paint filled with little bits of sand. You can make your own stuff um, but the Vallejo stuff is pre-made and pretty good value. It'll be about 10-11 pounds for 200 mils. You could do an army with this and change I think. I will apply that um, largely with a, an old sculpting tool and um, I also have a brush here, an acrid old brush and a dish of water. If I get any of this mud on the legs of the horses or other bits um, I can um, remove it with the brush. So for the application, just a big dollop on the end of my old sculpting tool. Um, what I'll try and do is even out the integral bases, the, the puddle bases that the horses come on. So there'll be a thicker layer in between and then you can spread this stuff quite thinly and still get the textured effect. Um, I like applying it with the sculpting tool um, especially one like this which has the, the sort of the rounded edge it means that you can 
so I move it round feet and things without covering them too much. Um, not much in the way of technique otherwise. I shovel the stuff on. Um, I like to try and smooth it as I go. But alternatively you can always um, make it rough at this point. And this could perhaps look like a, a ploughed field. You could do it that way as well. Right, here's a, a look after the earth texture has been applied. Drying time, it uh, depends on thickness. Um, it, realistically, this is an overnight job. Um, potentially looking at at least um, 12 hours for it to be hard enough to paint. I'll probably be leaving it 24 or so. So it's the morning after the night before. Um, this is nice and tough now. On its own, it's a pretty good finish. Um, I'm going to do a little highlight um, just by dry brushing some brown over there. This is leather brown from the Army Painter, but any brown will do. I tend to leave the, the base rims just in the colour of the laser cut MDF. It's brown. Don't feel the need to, to repaint that. Right, time to get out the little bits of uh, static grass and tufts. Rather than the bases just being left looking like they're um, a thick muddy field, I'm going to add some um, foliage to them. Um, I tend to like to get my uh, tufts from a company called War Painter. Um, a tuft is basically static grass that's been applied to a sticky dot of glue. You peel it off the paper and you can stick it on the base. Um, they are self-adhesive up to a point um, but I have found after um, a couple of years that they do tend to detach so I'm going to reinforce mine um, with some glue. Um, I also have um, a pot of static grass and um, the label has long since come off this I think it was from the defunct company foreground but um, loads of companies and uh, do static grass um, I think this is probably four millimeter you tend to find that static grass comes in different lengths sort of two four and six millimeter um, and I'll apply that with some tweezers much easier to use tweezers than your fingers um, I don't have a full static grass applicator um, I don't do big enough boards um, to make that kind of worthwhile in my view. Um, so the glue I'm going to be using um, comes from Geek Gaming Scenics, fast drying base glue. Not much to it other than to unscrew the lid um, and apply this. I won't cover the whole base um, and I will use a cocktail stick to help move this around. One of the best ways I find for um, camouflaging where your uh, puddle base joins your wooden base um, is to make sure that when you're applying grass and stuff you're covering over the whole area not stopping at the edges. There's a slight um, dip you can perhaps see at the back there where I've not put any glue down and that um, would be highlighted sorry that highlights where the edge of that base is so if I have some glue that continues all the way over there when I apply some tufts of grass that'll hide it so as I was saying the tufts are self-adhesive there's a bit of glue on the back of that but I'm using the bottle of glue to reinforce it and I tend to find that using the tuft to sort of be the center of where you're applying the grass makes it look a bit more natural so I'll just sprinkle some of this on and give the base a, a whack get rid of the excess I'll add some more tufts and some more grass on the way around we'll see how that looks afterwards so here's what it looks like with the Static grass and tufts applied. Um, glue's still wet. It's probably going to need about 
four to six hours for that to dry fully. Uh, once it's dry, it's always a good idea to turn these up and give them another tap to release more of the unstuck static grass. I think having the grass go all the way around the feet um, of a model or, or hooves in this case um, is a good way to um, ground it in the base. Um, actually it looks like we're stamping across a, a field rather than sort of the tufts just sort of um, going up to within a couple of mils of the, the feet. It looks a bit more natural this way. At least to my eye. Okay, we'll let all that dry and I'll come back with some stills of the finished unit. So you probably recognize this uh, unit of Chasseur Cheval from my previous video where I painted one of the members of the Elite Company. Um, this picture is more focused on the officer and the trumpeter in the center. And hopefully you can get a good look at the bases here um, to see where the grass and the tufts blend together. I think it looks quite natural having the tufts in the center um, of a grassy area. Um, makes things blend together rather than having them in distinct patches all over the base. I'd be interested to hear what you think of my basing techniques. If anybody else has an approach they'd like to share, please pop it in the comments below. Thanks for watching um, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye for now.